All right, let's get rolling uh, today. So what I wanted to spend some time on here uh, today uh, with everybody here in the Income Navigator service is just talking about some ways you can fail as a trader. Uh, and I want to uh, cover this because this is something uh, we really looked at uh, and you can, you can see it in some of the trades and some of the questions that we get uh, out there. So I want to make sure that everybody's really on the same page when it comes to uh, it comes to trading and what we should be doing here. And really, it's going to also help you as you understand how to navigate your way through the service. There's a lot of stuff going on in our Discord. Uh, we know it. Uh, and for those of you watching this that may not be in the Discord at some point, uh, that's all good as well. You can always uh, take a look. But there's a lot of stuff out there. And there's a lot of noise. Uh, and there's a lot of people sharing opinions and sharing news and sharing all kinds of stuff that's going on. And a lot of people sharing trades, which we do encourage. We want you to get a good sense of what's out there and what you can be doing uh, as a trader. But before we get into all of that, I really want to talk about the ways you can fail as a trader. Uh, so I'll share a little bit of notes that I put together this morning. Uh, and I did this a little bit while I was on vacation uh, for a couple of days this week as well. But you can, you know, it's estimated about 90% of all traders lose money. People, you know, 90% of all the people that start trading start fail, they lose money. 10% either manage to either break even uh, or and some will even turn a profit. Okay. And a select few of those 10% can probably do it consistently. Uh, and what we want to help you through with our service is understanding how to become a better trader and improving your level of consistency. So not only do we want you to be in that 10%, okay, of breaking even or turning a profit, now breaking even is not really a goal of anybody here, uh, but we want you to we want you to be profitable, but we also want you to be profitable consistently, which is a, even a smaller percentage of that 10%. All right, so that being said, uh, as, as we move through, understanding what are these 90% of the people doing wrong, okay, that the 10% that are hopefully in our service are doing correctly, uh, that are that are making money. So number one is lack of a trading plan. And let me see, see if I can shrink this down just a bit more so we don't have too much, depending on what you're viewing on your screen. Uh, but really a lack of a trading plan. I know we say it, and I do especially say it incessantly on our uh, our channel here is, what was your plan? What's your trading plan? Uh, a lot of questions. Well, what do I do? I have a loss on this, or this is losing money, or I'm down on here. Okay. Those posts don't really help anybody get any better. Okay. Uh, when, hey, you know, I'm red. Today's red. Well, of course, today's red. The markets are down. Some of our trades are down. Okay. You might be red. We were green nicely at the open. Who knows what will be at the, cl at the close today? Uh, you just never know what today's going to give you. However, what is your plan? Okay, so in, in order to avoid joining the 90% of traders who lose money, you've got to have a clear and concise trading plan. What is your plan? Okay, well, this trade's down. It's doing this. What do I do? Uh, I don't know. What does the plan say to do? Okay, uh, well, I'm down 50%. 50 okay, well, is your plan to take losses at 50% and stop out? Or is your plan to... Uh, stop at a 100% loss, 150% loss, a 200, a 2x loss. Okay. What does the plan say? So I learned a long time ago that in order to be consistent and successful, you got to have a clear, methodical, and concise method of approaching trading. This is what we really focus on here is what's the method okay, of, of trading? What does your trade plan say to do? Guessing or going by your gut instinct is going to land you in that 90% loser's bracket. Okay, over the long term, you're going to hit some winners. Okay, a lot of people hitting winners for two, three, two, three months of this year when the market was only going straight up. Well, it doesn't take a genius to lob on a bunch of bullish trades and make a bunch of money in the next uh, in you know in the first three months of this year. However, let's say that this market goes down for the next three months. Who knows what it's going to do, right? But what if we go down the same amount, the same ten percent that we went up? since the beginning of the year, okay? Well, where are these people going to be at some point if they didn't have a clear plan, okay? And if you're jumping around from 
John's plan to Fred's plan to Joe's plan to Igor's plan to Tom's plan to Candy's plan to anybody else who who knows who you're listening to or what you're watching. If you're jumping from plan to plan because somebody's posting something successful out there, that's going to put you in the loser bracket. Okay, we just finished March Madness. Okay, with 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 the basketball tournaments, the men's and the women's. Okay, who made it the farthest? Okay, was it those Cinderella teams uh, that uh, you know got you know put together one or two good games and pulled off some upsets? Okay, or were that the two teams that were ranked number one overall ended up winning? Well, it was the two teams that were consistently the two best teams all year long. If you're watching basketball on the men's side, it was it was Connecticut. They were the number one men's team, okay, and they won the whole tournament. Okay, if you're watching women's, South Carolina was undefeated and they won the the women's side. Okay, they were consistently great all year long. Okay. Now, you had some teams in the tournament pull off some upsets, pull off some wins, and they won a game or two, and they made things exciting or interesting, unless you were gambling on the bracket, then maybe it didn't help you, right? But there's always upsets. But in the end, the best teams usually will rise to the top, okay? The people with the best trading plans will rise to the top, okay? You're going to have your one-offs, and you're going to have your people that are knocking out 5% or 15% and scalping and making tons of money and uh, doing some trading things or zero DTE, you're going to have all of that happen. What you have to be able to do is block that out okay, and not use your gut instinct here, but have your trading plan. So trading journal can be really helpful here, making helping you understand or document your, your trading tools and applications. The trading plan that I've given you guys has not only the open trades on it, but it also has the closed trades that you can sort, but it also have pivot tables in there, which take all of that data and allow you to massage it around so that you can really analyze what's working. Okay. I closed another strangle trade today. Okay. So what does that mean, you know, overall for, for those that, that think, you know, that don't like strangles or, or something? I'm not saying strangles is for everybody. I just happen to use it and do okay. Well, that was another winner today on the strangle side, All right? So we managed to put together a nice, uh, an, another nice winner and we've won 21 out of 23 trades so far okay. um, for the year. Why? Uh, simply because you've got a plan and you're managing that plan on a consistent basis. Okay. Let me let a few more people in here. All right, so let's get back to this a bit without straying too far is Having a journal okay. that figures out, oops, gonna mute some people. Hang on. You won't be long. All right. I don't know. I will remute everybody once again. Okay. If you're just joining, please just make sure you're on mute. All right. So it's vital to understand, document what constitutes, you know, a buy signal, a sell signal, your stop losses, your exit strategies. Everything should be defined so that you're able to follow that plan at least at the beginning until you feel that you've mastered the trading to the extent of now I can just look at something and figure out what to do, right? But keep it simple. If you can't write your trading strategy, not your whole plan, but you can't write a single trading strategy on the back of a business card, it's probably too complex. Okay. The only reason mine are probably a little bit lengthy and I'd have to write really small on the back of a business card or an index card, and maybe index card is better than business card, Okay, is more to help give everybody here a sense of what I do. I, I really know it, and I could probably distill it down uh, into the back of a business card, but you got to keep things simple. You're in, you're out. Why you in, why you out? Uh, follow the rules and make yourself successful. So number one, people fail because they don't have a trading plan. Number two, they fail because they lack discipline. Having a well- uh, outline trading plan is really crucial for you, but the discipline to adhere to this plan is what's going to separate successful traders from unsuccessful ones. Okay? Because you don't have a plan, you're following someone else's plan. My plan's not your plan. Okay? My plan may have more risk, may have less risk. It might be a larger account, or in my small account, maybe it's too small of an account. Okay? You've got to find what works best for you and build your own plan. 
Um, so if the way you evaluate a potential trade setup is different each time, it's likely due to either A, you have a, a poorly defined plan, or two, you lack the discipline to follow it. My guess is you're lacking the discipline to follow it. I have, I have a loss, I'm just gonna take the loss, okay? And But you took it too early and the trade turned around because you have a 200% stop, but you stopped out at 120% and you felt the market was just gonna go down for you know every day for a year, right? Well, the, the market's down 10 bucks today, right? So it was down you know two, 3% yesterday. Not not the end of the world. We're not talking 10% drops here. Okay. Some things are, are back up today, right? Gold's up today. NASDAQ is actually up today. The S&P is down a little bit today. NASDAQ's up, okay? Things move. Make sure that you're sticking to your, your plan, okay? And then for some people, you didn't stop out at a 2X stop because you thought things could turn around and that we were overdone. Okay, and now you're down 300% or 400%, okay? Again, it's not because your plan may have been bad, although that could be part of it. It's that you're just lacking the discipline to follow it. One of the things we wanna make sure we teach you is having the discipline to follow your plan until you figure out back up in here from the training journal that the plan may have a flaw in it and we wanna tweak the plan. Most of my trades haven't changed in years. Some have changed a little bit and they changed a little bit over time. Why? Because I've refined the plan. I found something that works a little bit better or makes me more consistent. But success in trading comes from consistently applying a proven strategy. That's it. Okay. Find something that works and do it consistently and stick to the plan consistently. Whether that's the the one, one, two trade or strangle trades or ratio spreads or selling naked puts, okay, whatever, or anything else. Maybe you're buying calls. Maybe you're buying leaps. Maybe you're selling leaps. Who knows what you're doing, okay? Success in trading comes from consistently applying a proven strategy. How do you know it's proven? Because it's worked over time, okay? And not because some guy posted it and has some winners to, to show you here, okay? He's, he's been doing it or she's been doing it for a length of time. Also define a strategy that suits you and commit to it with unwavering discipline. Okay? Find a strategy that suits you. Can't be more emphatic on this piece. I'll even capitalize the word you here. Okay? Find a strategy that suits you. Okay? If you don't like the volatility of losing a couple strangles here and there, don't do the trade. If you don't like the volatility of selling some naked puts at seven DTE, which we I don't do, but some others might, then don't do it. If you don't like selling credit spreads, don't do it. If it doesn't fit you, don't do it. If it's a strategy you that you like and you feel it's gonna fit you, then do it, but stay disciplined to it. So the best advice for overcoming a lack of discipline here is to define the trading strategies that fits you and your goals and follow it faithfully. That will eliminate the lack of discipline. Most everybody here will get burned on a trade that goes against you because you failed to follow your stop losses or you failed to follow your exit plan uh, correctly. Okay. If you've defined it, follow it. To me, this is one of the reasons I don't adjust trades. Okay. I don't really want to adjust a trade that's gone against me. It doesn't mean you can't or you shouldn't, okay? Oh, but Tom, you should have rolled the, the puts up so that you could, so that your calls aren't losing so much. Oh, well, no, the, the trade's still going bad. The, mar the, the, in the underlying asset is still going up. It's blowing through my strikes. It's causing massive pain on the call side. Yeah, I could roll puts up and realize a little bit of money, but the trade is still bad in my opinion, okay? Just because I roll puts up or roll something out doesn't make the trade a winner. All it's doing is making it a little less temporarily painful while you're still in a bad trade. I'm not saying this is for everybody. I'm giving you my, my take here. I have the discipline to just get out and not try to keep the dream alive. Why do I want to roll out 30 days or 60 days and try to keep a trade alive. Okay? To me, it's almost like revenge trading. When you roll, 
you're hoping. So A, hope is not a trading strategy because all it is is hope. Okay, you're giving yourself time to hopefully be right, but you're going against a bad trade by rolling it, in my opinion. Okay, this is just Tom's opinion, not anybody else here. All right. I have the discipline for me, it's just the discipline to get out of a bad trade and then let's say we'll put on something good. Okay, let's go find a good trade and let's get that one on instead. Okay. So you can either keep a bad trade alive and try to un you know get out of it. Or you could just close it, take the loss, because that's what you're doing when you roll anyway. You're you're booking the loss and you're putting on another trade that's still going the wrong way. Maybe it'll reverse, who knows? Okay, or I could just go out there and find another trade that I'm going to size appropriately. Okay. And then we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. And then number three reason people fail while you're in the 90% losers bracket, you didn't make it to the championship game here is you're setting unrealistic expectations. So setting realistic uh, goals is essential for long-term trading profitability. Okay. In order to be profitable long-term, you should set really good, realistic goals for yourself. Is it possible to achieve above average returns? Absolutely. Okay. But understand that you're going to have to take greater risks. If you want to make more than 1% or 2% a month, okay, which is going to put you in rarefied trading air, okay? 2% a month is 24% a year. The market averages 10 to 10 to 11% over time. Okay. So even at 2% a month, you're trying to double the average return of the market. Okay. At 24% a year, 2% a month, okay, you're going to beat 90 some percent of all of the traders and the hedge funds and the mutual funds on the market. You're going to do better than people that are paid millions, if not billions, to manage other people's money, okay? But if you want more, if you want 3% a month, if you want 4% a month, you have to understand that you have to be willing to take risks and greater risks, okay? I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't. In my IRA, I have a 1.5% a month goal, okay? That's 18% a year. That will still beat the market on average, it will beat most funds on average, okay? So if you're aiming for realistic returns like 15 to 20% annually, okay, that's to me a little bit more realistic in trading, okay? Yes, it's still 20% or 20 or 30%. It's gonna put you in rarefied air, okay? It will require more risk, okay? But you know, if you understand that and you're willing to accept it, fantastic, okay? So just understand what you're willing to, to take on and where you're willing to go uh, with things uh, before you do it. So set realistic expectations for yourself. Yes, people can make 10% a month, but not consistently. Okay, Those people are rare. And if you're on YouTube posting 10% a month gains, okay, I don't know what you're, you know, what else you're doing. If I was making 10% a month, I wouldn't be on YouTube much longer either, okay? I'm making two to 3%, okay? Sometimes I'll make a little bit more. Sometimes I'll make a little less, okay? I made 5%, I think, in January, and I made 6% in February, okay? And I made 1% last month, okay? I'm bummed it was not consistent, but I'm still, my goal is not 10%. Okay, I'm up 13.5% this year in realized gains. I'm up over 10% in that lick. Okay. Okay. That's over 3% a month, okay, which is where my my gains are. But I'm okay, okay accepting a little bit of that risk. Just make sure you understand that. Okay. Uh, effective money management and the understanding that losses are part of trading will help you achieve those goals. Okay. You're going to lose. You're absolutely going to lose. No one's going to trade. Okay, at a hundred percent or ninety-five percent over over time. Okay, right now I'm doing pretty well overall for the year. Uh, I think we're at ninety-three uh, percent for the year. Great, because we're premium sellers, and I'm selling, and I'm I'm doing high probability trades. Okay, last month or this month, I should say, we're at like eighty-six percent. So we're down a bit. We've had a few losses, but uh, some hedge hedge loss and a and a ratio spread. Okay. 
effective money management is key. Okay, if you identify realistic expectation and manage towards that goal, you're going to learn to become profitable long term. I want you guys to become profitable long term traders. You're going to outlast the flash in the pans. Trust me. Okay? For some of you remember on Facebook, there was a lot of zero DTE trading going on. Okay, and there's a lot of people that you know all of a sudden they were on big streaks and they were making money. Well, everybody jumped in, and then that strategy didn't work quite as well in a different market environment. Okay, well now you don't see a whole lot of that. All these zero DTE traders pretty much gone. There's a couple left. Okay, why? Because nothing works forever over time without you know improving on it. Uh, and some people will just blow themselves up and they will be gone. Okay. Your goal is to become profitable long-term by setting realistic expectations. Okay. Again, it may not be a flashy goal, but if they're realistic and you can learn to live with them and achieve them, you're going to be a successful trader. There's nothing wrong with 2% a month. You will be an elite trader at 2% a month. Okay. You're not going to be the one percenter out there that's posting gigantic gains every day and scalping stuff and doing uh, crazy long term you know, or long call trades or something on stocks. There's those people, but then there's everybody else who's going to lose. And most people that try to follow that strategy will end up losing okay? because you're trading someone else's strategy and it doesn't fit you and you can't get in and out as quickly. All right. Number four here, lack of patience. Markets will trend about 20% of the time. The rest of that time is spent waiting for a trend to develop or the right trade setups to emerge. Unsuccessful traders are driven by the excitement of trading. Okay, They're going to engage in overtrading and are often going to settle for subpar trade setups. Okay? Most people are losing. The 90% of people that are losing trades... Okay. One of the reasons that they're losing is they lack patience. They're just trying to throw trades on, okay? Because they're, and great thing about being in a Discord or other Discords is you see other people trading. The bad thing is that you see other people trading. Number one, it can learn, it can lead you to unrealistic expectations because somebody's having some current success with something. It can lead to a lack of discipline because you're not following your plan, okay? You can maybe not even have your own plan because you're following someone else's plan here. And then four here, you can, it's going to cause you to trade. It's going to force you to trade because someone else is setting up some kind of trade. The most dangerous thing for me here is when we watch people posting wins, I, I hate the p &L channel thing because I think while it can be uh, something that dry, that gives people some confidence that they can do this. I think it also drives people to do things that are dumb. I think it also drives people to do things that aren't their own because they're seeing someone else is having success doing something. Okay. Well, I can do that too. That sounds like a good plan. And I'm going to, I'm going to just start trading that. Okay. Lack of patience can lead you to significant losses here. Be patient. Wait for the setup to come to you. Okay. Right now, I think there's a lot of really good setups but I'm not running into them. I closed a strangled trade today. What did that do for me? It opened up some buying power. Okay, So now I have a little bit of buying power. I could potentially look to be putting on a, a new trade. Okay, But I want to make sure the trade fits my strategy. I don't want to force something uh, in there. So I want to make sure that uh, I'm sticking to a specific trading plan, which is going to help mitigate the urge to do this at every perceived opportunity. Markets go down, maybe volatility goes up, and you know you think it's a great opportunity. And there are opportunities out there. The problem is, are they for you? Do they fit your plan? If not, just stay patient. Good trades will come around. Okay, so good opportunities are not scarce, but they do require patience. Okay? You won't have to wait long for an opportunity. Okay? There's always a trade right around the corner. So stick to your plan and ignore the noise around you. Okay. And if, if I can even ask this of, of members, to be careful what you post. Opinions don't help anybody. Okay. Your feeling of what's going to help or hurt or happen tomorrow or later today or why something's happening. Okay. It's an opinion. It's great. Okay. And in the general chat, if you want to share it, fine. 
Okay. And one of the reasons we, we separated some of the trading from that is there's a lot of opinions on news. Okay. Well, here's here's a news event and here's why it's a fact. Well, that's an opinion. The why is an opinion. The news, if it's even a fact, okay, will then lead people to take different opinions away from that particular news. And that's kind of why I use the news as noise. It doesn't mean that I don't, you know, maybe watch or listen to the fact, or, or I can't even avoid some of the news, right? But the question is, how do you avoid listening to someone's opinion? Because the news is being delivered by someone who has an opinion as to why that news is making something happen, okay? But somebody else that may not be published or you may not see may have a completely different take on the outcome of that. Okay. So be careful about the noise that you see and focus on your plan. Focus on what you see. Okay. Focus on what you're seeing ahead of you in the charts. Focus on what's happening. Okay. Is there a trend? Is there a setup? Does it fit your trading style? That's why I review those charts a bit. And then I, I, I take the charts and I find out, well, what trade would make sense here? Uh, and maybe if we have some time, we'll do that today. Um, I want to wrap this up and then we'll we'll get into maybe some questions and we'll evaluate some trades. All right. And then the last one here is poor money management. And this might be if you were ranking these from one to five uh, here and figuring out which one would be the most important. This one might be the most important. Okay. Effective money management may be the most crucial aspect of, of, of what you're of, of successful trading and what you're doing. Uh, encompassing risk reward analytics, the probabilities, stops, position sizing. This is the key. When we work with you on putting a plan together, this is the most important piece of, of them all. Okay. All these other things that I just talked about are why you, why you can fail, pale in comparison to having a poor money management plan. Professional traders usually will risk only about one to three percent of their trading capital per position. Per position. Not per strategy, per position here. This conservative approach will help maintain your trading account's integrity even through inevitable losses. If you've lost a trade in the last couple of days and it's been extremely painful, okay, did you size it? Is the loss more than one or two or three percent or whatever you put together? If you had a five percent loss or a ten percent loss of your in your portfolio, because you had to close something that was running away, you're sizing too big. Trading with too large a position for your account size can lead to disproportionate losses and potential account depletion. This is where you're going to get murdered. Okay? I'll highlight it. If you're trading too large, you're going to get murdered. Okay? No way around that. And if your capital's limited, if you have a small account, that's great, $5,000, $10,000 account, Start small and focus on consistent risk managed growth, okay, to achieve sustainability in trading. Okay. In my small account, I might risk up to 5% per position, but it's still 5%. That might not be your risk management. I feel it's 5% because I feel I can replenish that. Or if it's my kids' accounts, okay, that they're able to replenish that fairly easily because it's small. Okay. But I still want you to have a position size maximum and maybe that's two three four five percent whatever it might be my small account trading plan identifies this and it's less than five okay i think it's four percent uh in my trading plan in fact i'll even pull that up and we can look at the trading plan for the small account there but i want you to understand what your maximum size is so the risk management piece okay and it's for me it is five percent so it is five percent um, in that particular account, right? because it is a small account and I feel that I can take on a little bit more risk, but that may not be you. Okay, so I want you to make sure that uh, it fits your piece, but if your capital is limited, start small and trade small. Okay? Most traders will oversize. Why? Mainly because okay, they want to overcome the problem that their capital is too limited. I don't have a big account, so I'm going to size up way too much. Okay, and now I got one loss and it wipes out a ton of my portfolio. Consistency is the key. 
So on your way to becoming a consistently successful trader, realize that a major key is longevity. There will be flash in the pans out there all of the time. I guarantee they will go away. It might take months. It might take a year or two, but eventually they will all go away. Very few people will be posting or having a YouTube channel or something consistently over time okay, that, um, that they can sustain unless they have realistic expectations and they have good money management. Okay? If they're doing that and they have a good plan that they're sticking to, okay, then they'll be around for a while. Okay? So realize that longevity is important. If your risk on any given position is relatively small, then you can survive a drawdown. Yeah, I lost a ZB ratio spread. I lost it in one day. Okay, yesterday was a bad day for bonds. Okay, uh, bonds went down. I took a loss. I got out of it. It was a point Z, a point four five of a percent. Okay, not even a half a percent. So that loss to me was a half a percent loss. Why? Because my trading plan says that if I'm going to enter spec trades, okay, I'm going to risk less than half of a percent. Okay, so that's my trading plan uh, and I'm sticking to it. So on spec trades, okay, my typical risk on a spec trade is a half a percent. If you read my trading plan and you go to spec trades, uh, you'll see Okay, I'll do a quick screen share. Okay, spec trades, right? Zero DTE trading, max loss less than 0.5, less than half a percent of net lick. Some leap puts uh, out there. I don't know if I have this one sized. Um, as well, it doesn't have a sizing piece on it. Credit spread trades. Okay, here you go. Sizing. Less than 1%, 0.5% is optimal. Okay. So I'm still shooting for a half a percent of net lick as a max loss, but I'll go up to maybe, maybe 1% on some credit spreads. Uh, by the way, we did close a credit spread winner in Active Trader uh, today. So, um, like that, right? Half a percent. Put ratio spreads, half a percent to maybe 1%. Okay, I risked 0.45 of a percent on that trade. What did you risk? Okay, did you risk 2%, 3%, 4%? Is that part of your strategy or did you trade it because Tom trades it? Okay, so I'll trade it. Okay, just because I trade it doesn't mean I can't ever lose, but I sized mine correctly. Did you? Okay. Before you copy a trade from Igor or myself or any other trader here, understand how it fits into your trading plan. When you join our service, the first thing we tell you to do is to not trade for two weeks, for at least one to two weeks. Okay, I beg you to not place a trade. I beg you to not follow Igor's alerts, my alerts. Don't follow it. The first thing we ask you to do is go to the getting started piece and start watching some of the basic videos on creating a trading plan on uh, our strategies and get to and just watch what's going on and observe, ask questions. Okay. But most people, hey, you pay, you know, you pay 150 bucks or 100 bucks or something uh, for a service, or maybe you pay 500 for someone else's service. Who knows? Or you pay 50 bucks. And you got to get your money's worth right away. So I got to place a trade. No, okay. the first thing you should do is get a, an understanding of what are they doing? What strategies are they doing? And does that fit my trading style? And if it does, then I want you to do it, okay? Put it into your plan and have a plan, okay? That's all we're asking here, all right? Um, so understanding money management again, uh, making sure that you're risking, okay? Very little. If you're risking 10% of your account on each trade, in four trades, half your account is gone. Okay. Um, so for me, spec trades, it's so a, a question here is half a percent is in the account. Small account can go up to 5% max. Well, it might be 5% 
is the most I would ever book on any one trade. But if you look at the trade plan, each strategy, I will define the sizing of that particular plan. Okay. My overall trade rules, small account, big account might say you can't risk more than 2% or maybe up to 5% depending on the account. That's the overall rule for the portfolio. No one trade should exceed that, but it doesn't even, doesn't matter when it comes to spec trades for me, if it's not part of my core trading, okay, it's always going to be small account, big account, doesn't matter. It's always going to be 1% or less or a half a percent or so. Okay? That's how I size spec trades, okay? which is why we tell you, read the trade plans, understand what you're doing so that you can size appropriately, right? Because again, trading, trade, not training, trading, I'm too used to trading or training people, okay? So trading uh, successfully is just not easy. It's hard work. It requires you to develop mental parts of yourself that you may never have used before. So if anyone's telling you that trading is easy, okay, run the other way and fast. If they're telling you, oh, this is easy stuff, just do this and you'll make it done. It's not easy. This is hard stuff. Okay? It's mentally challenging. But it can also be very rewarding. It can lead to significant financial freedom, okay, over time. And it's going to lead to a lot of satisfaction in your life as to what you can achieve. You can create a great source of income for you and your family to achieve financial freedom, which for everybody here may mean something different. What I want you to do is figure out, number one, okay, do you have a trading plan? And are you using it? If not, you figure it out or join the small group trading plan thing and let's help put together a trading plan for you, okay? Or just take mine and start to figure out what strategies you like here. And you can use other people's strategies, but you got to make sure that they work for you. Does it fit for you, okay? Do you have the discipline to trade? Or are you just out there, you know, just throwing trades on, you have no clue what's going on, you're not following your plan, number two, and you're watching other people post stuff in the um, the off topic or the p &L, uh channel that how if this guy's doing it and he's made a lot of money because he's posting big wins, I should be able to, no, it's going to get you murdered, okay? I personally just stay away, okay? It's great if it motivates you, okay? But if it motivates you to put on crazy trades, then stay away from those channels, Okay. Are your expectations realistic? Okay. Do you have the patience to wait for your setup? Okay, there's a lot of questions of, hey, I wanna put on the next 112 trade. Can I just do it today? Can I just do it because it's a down day? Okay, well, yesterday was a down day and you could have put one on, but today's a down day again. Okay, but what does your trading plan say? Does your trading plan say, hey, I wanna put on a 112 trade, but Today is 127 days, okay, on ES. So are you going to put it on seven days early if it says 120 days, or are you going to just wait? Now, if you're getting close, I mean, give or take a couple of days is not going to kill you in a 120-day, four-month-out trade, okay? But understand what's going on and be patient. Is the setup right? Well, you got two down days in a row. I mean, we're down 10 bucks today. Okay, so the market's not exactly crashing here, but we're down. We could go down more. Now we're down 11. Okay. Is the, is the market going down more? Should I wait? You know what? Why not? Why not wait? What are you, are you in a rush to get the trade on? Okay. Are you in, in fear because the market could go up 5% tomorrow uh, and you're going to have missed out on a trade? Yeah, if it goes up, it goes up. Okay. What's going on out there? And what are you doing? Just because other people are saying, hey, I put a trade on today, doesn't mean you should. Okay. What, what's in your plan? I feel like I'm lecturing you guys today, um, but I'm doing this to make sure that you understand how to be successful in trading. And then the last piece here is just making sure that you use really good money management techniques, understand how much you're risking overall per trade, make sure you understand how much you're risking per strategy. I have a per strategy maximum, okay? I don't want any one trade strategy taking more than 60% of my available trading buying power. Why? Okay, or maybe it goes up to 80, who knows? But 
Why? Because I want to keep my risk in check. Okay. And I only want to risk maybe 2% of my account on one trade. Uh, that's if I hit my stops. Okay. If I miss a stop and it goes down to 300% loss instead of 200, I'm still not going to get murdered. Okay. Maybe I'll lose 3% instead of 2% of my net lick. Okay. Cause I'm, cause something got absolutely blown to hell, you know, and we, I couldn't get out. Okay. However, I'm pretty aware of what my, of what trades I got on. Uh, and I'm, and the nice thing about futures is you've got access nearly 23 hours a day, five to six days a week. Okay. So you, you can trade pretty easily as you go out there. Okay. Doesn't mean this stuff is easy. It just means you can get into trades and out of trades if you need to, okay? but only do it based upon what you're seeing uh, and what's out there uh, and become consistent, okay? Reduce your risk and you're gonna be much more successful. So I hope this makes sense uh, for everybody here. Uh, and I wanted to share this piece with you. Uh, we'll we'll put this out uh, for everybody to, to watch. Uh, and I hope you take some of this to heart. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there on this piece of the uh, of the trading today.